So let's talk about diagnosing extraordinary cases. In multiple regression, a case can be extraordinary by having an unusual Y value compared to the model, check for high residuals in the residuals plot, or having an outstanding X value for one of the predictors. Think about what we looked at when we did simple linear regression when an X was far from the other X's, from the mean of the other X's, or it could have an unusual combination of X values. So we've got some cutoffs for when we study the three um, components of being extreme. We're going to revisit these. We visited them in simple linear regression, and we're going to visit them again in multiple. And now we're going to look at some cutoffs. So for leverage, which we're going to call HI, that H comes from something called the hat matrix. That's why it's called an H sometimes. Um, we're going to say that if it's above two times the number of predictors plus one divided by the sample size, or three times the number of predictors plus one divided by the sample size, that would be considered either moderately or very unusual. For residuals, the standardized and studentized residual, which we're going to learn in just a moment, these follow a t-distribution, and so we're going to follow our usual convention of saying if it's beyond two standard deviations away from the mean, it's going to be moderately unusual, and plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean is very unusual. And then we're going to have a measure of influence called Cook's distance. And a loose cutoff that we're going to use is 0.5 for moderate and 1 for very unusual. Now, let's talk about leverage. In simple regression, leverage was easy to see if the value has a high leverage because it's far from the mean of the x's in a scatter plot. Remember our gas tax revenue data? And we had California way out here, um, far away from the mean of the other x's. It has lots more registered vehicles than the other states. That was easy to see in a scatter plot. In multiple regression, when you have k predictors, a point might not be far from any of the individual x means, and yet still exert large leverage because it has an unusual combination of predictor values. So recall our coaster data set that we've been working with. We regress speed on height and drop. So we've got our output here from R. We notice that our p-values are really low and our r-squared is pretty high. So it looks like this model is explaining a lot of the variability and speed using height and drop, and height and drop are both highly significant because of those low p-values. So let's compute what a moderate leverage would be. According to our formula, 2 times the number of predictors plus 1, which is 2 times we had two predictors, height and drop, plus 1 divided by 76 ends up being 0 0.079. And then high leverage would be that same calculation with a 3 here instead of a 2. And that gives us 0.118. So we can use a function to plot the leverages in R. The code for that is in the R help file in Canvas, in our Canvas course. We can see that there's one leverage way up here between 0.2 and 0.25 that's much higher than the rest. We'll revisit that in just a second. All right, so we've got output of all the actual leverages, not just a plot of them. And what I've done here is I've created a table with just the top nine leverages, so we can just take a look at those. And I created a histogram of all the leverages. There are seven leverages that are above 0.079. And there are two that are above 0.118, but one of them is very extreme when looking at the distribution. That was that one that we saw on the plot on the previous slide. This happens to be England's oblivion, and it has a leverage of 0.24, which stands out among the other leverages. So this one needs to be investigated. It turns out that oblivion drops into a hole in the ground. So height for oblivion is only 65 feet, and drop is 180 feet. So this unusual combination of our predictors is what is making it have high leverage. So oblivion's leverage should make us think about conducting further regression analyses, one with and without oblivion. The more complex the regression model, the more important it is to look for high leverage cases and their effects. So now we're going to talk about residuals. This new idea of a residual called a standardized and then a studentized residual. Now remember what a regular old residual is. It's just the numerator in this calculation. It's 
the observed y minus the predicted y. So you can have positive or negative residuals. Well, a standardized residual is when we divide that difference by the standard error of the regression and the square root of 1 minus the thing from the hat matrix, from the, from the leverages. So we standardize it with that denominator. And then a studentized residual, otherwise known as a deleted t residual, is the same thing as a standardized residual, except the standard error is calculated on the regression with everything except for the point in question. So I guess if you're saying, I think this point might be extreme, you want to compare it against the standard error of all the other points in the regression. If you think that one's extreme, it might change that standard error. So we have a studentized and a regular old standardized residual. And these follow the t-distribution. So residuals beyond two and three standard deviations are considered moderately and highly extreme, respectively. So we've got the um, standardized residuals out of R, and we see that there are three that are very extreme. They're above a three, accelerator, hypersonic, and volcano. And we've got oblivion down there. I just thought we'd talk about that again since we've already pointed it out with high leverage. We'll be revisiting oblivion again here too. So it's not too bad on the residuals. Now, a case with both high leverage and a large student ties residual is likely to change the regression model substantially all by itself. And this is the subject of our third topic, influential observations. So a case is said to be influential when you have high leverage and large student ties residual and cries out for special attention because removing it is likely to give a different regression model. So we're going to talk about one particular measure called the Cook's distance, or Cook's D, to evaluate influence. So this one's widely um, in, in statistics programs. It's widely offered. There are others, but this is just one, and it'll get us starting a conversation about influential observations. So we're going to give some loose cutoffs that if D is point, greater than 0.5, we're going to suspect possible influence. If it's greater than 1, we're going to strongly suspect possible influence. And we're also going to look at the distribution of all the Cook's D's for our regression. And if our particular D is extreme in the distribution of all Cook's distances, then the observation is almost certainly influential. So we've got, we've updated our table with our four roller coasters that we've been talking about. And we've, with some Cook's D in the right column, and we've also made a histogram of all the Cook's distances for this regression. And we can see that None of the D are above 0.5 or 1, but we see that there are a few that are extreme in the distribution. And again, these are our same four roller coasters that we've been talking about. So we already understand what's going on with Oblivion. We understand that Oblivion's outstanding status is because most of the drop is underground and doesn't contribute to the height. But what about the other three roller coasters? Well, further investigation reveals that the other three are mechanically accelerated. They're not just simply gravity driven. So these were the three with the very high student ties residuals, the ones that were mechanically accelerated. So those are the ones with the student ties residuals above three. Okay, so what do we do? First, let's reanalyze without the three roller coasters, without the three accelerator roller coasters. So here, I've called my new data set coast small in R, and I regress speed on height and drop again. But the smaller data set is excluding the three accelerator roller coasters. Notice the striking effect that it has. Now, drop is significant, but height is no longer significant in the model. It's got a high p-value of 0.292. So now, we can reanalyze yet again with a simple linear regression with only drop because the other one was non-significant. Height was not significant. And take a look. The R squared is 92%. It's the same as it was with both the predictors. It's doing just as well with a simple linear regression. OK, so what do we do with these? We can't just remove them and not ever talk about them again. One strategy for dealing with them is to construct an indicator variable that's 0 for all the cases except for the one that we want to isolate. So this is equivalent to omitting the case, but with two advantages. It makes clear to others which case is extraordinary, and the t-statistic for the indicator variable's coefficient tests whether the case is influential. 
So what I've done is I've created three extra columns in my coaster data set for my indicator variables. So notice that my one for accelerator puts a one in the column that has accelerators data and a zero everywhere else. For volcano, it puts a one in the line that has volcano in it. And for hypersonic, it puts a one for the row that contains the hypersonic data. And there's zero everywhere else. And that's all there is to it to create an indicator variable. So when I run the regression, again, with speed on drop and my three individual accelerated roller coasters, I can see that my p-values for each of the individual roller coasters is tiny. So the p-values confirm that these are significant, that the blast coasters don't fit with the other coasters. All by themselves, they're significant. Also notice that the coefficient for drop is the same as the model without the three blast coasters. It's about 0 0.18, 0 0.19. All right, so what's the, what's the moral to the story? When you have both high leverage and large studentized residual cases, it is irresponsible to report only the regression on all the data. You should compute and discuss regressions with such cases removed, like we did, and then discuss extraordinary cases individually if they offer insight. And we did that by including them as indicator variables.